Hello, hello. I didn't know if I'd ever get here, honestly, but here I am chatting on a podcast ahead of this series, whether it lasts for the next five weeks or beyond that or not even that. I thought it would be a good idea to introduce myself and detail the purpose of yet another tennis podcast to add to the masses thronging the internet. So, <laughs> my name is Abigail Johnson. You might recognize my voice, but you absolutely will not be able to place my accent. It remains a mystery to all persons inclusive of myself, but I am born and bred English for what it's worth. I'm a freelance tennis broadcaster, and I mainly commentate across both TV and radio. I will spare you the entire CV, but you may well have heard me on channels such as the BBC, Tennis TV, Amazon Prime, etc., etc. At the time of speaking, I've covered three of the four Grand Slams, but I have a big passion for tennis right at the starting rungs of the professional ladder. I'm around ITF World Tennis Tour events being staged in the UK whenever one collides with a free week in my diary. I have grown a little bit notorious for this, it's got to be said, and really that's the biggest driving factor in starting up this podcast now. Over the years, a few people have told me that they're waiting for me to drop a podcast. Abigail, when are you dropping a tennis podcast? When's it happening? Uh, I, I've never done it because, believe it or not, as much as I'd have no issue talking about the ins and outs of the ATP and WTA tour for a solid hour, I'm not about to create a podcast just to hear the sound of my own voice. I always said I'd never start one unless I found a niche to cover within the sport. Of course, it has to be tennis. So probably for a year or two, I considered the idea of doing a podcast covering the entry-level pro events on the ITF tour. So the $15,000 and $25,000 tournaments that are staged in abundance across the globe during the season. As much as I really got on board with this idea, with the sheer volume of these events taking place on a week-in, week-out basis, and with my work weeks varying wildly in terms of time time commitment, time zones, etc. I just didn't see myself being able to commit the time and keep the standard of work up to what it should be for something like that. So that was that idea out of the window. But the tennis landscape within the UK specifically is moving in a really good direction. Not only has the number of ITF events staged in the UK far more than doubled since we last saw a full competitive calendar in 2019, but we had the Labour Cup in London last month, also the Davis Cup in Glasgow, the Billie Jean King Cup finals are also coming to Glasgow next month, and multiple weeks a month there are tennis tournaments of some kind or other taking place right here in GB. And these days I tend to be around for them more often than I'm not. So why not? That was the thought I'd been having for a few months now. And as I was driving to Sheffield for finals day of the M25 event on Saturday, which is a very long, very winding drive with a lot of time to think, I thought, look, if you don't do it now, you never will. It is really a case of now or never. So in typical last minute fashion, such as the theme of my life, I subjected Giles Hussey to the most impromptu interview of his career after the final and thought, right, you've just taken up 30 minutes of someone's life that they're never getting back. So now you have to do it. And so I'm doing it. And here I am. And here you are. What this will look and or sound like on a week-in, week-out basis might vary. I have to fit this around the commentary and travel and other things that crop up in my life. But at the end of last year, following finals week of the UK Pro League, which is an event that I'm really invested in, I put a fairly lengthy post up on Instagram, which is not unusual, <laughs> where I spoke along the lines of, I will continue to do what I can to improve the profile of tennis further down the rankings ladder. I like to think that since I started volunteering at ITF events when I was a teenager at uni, which wasn't actually all that long ago, but feels like another lifetime, I've done a fair amount towards that. 
but I can't shake the feeling that I have the means and the ability to do more and to go further than I have done. And so here we are. I say we because you're here and I thank you for that and I congratulate you on making it this far because if you weren't already sick of the sound of my voice, you definitely will be by now. I have committed. Let's do it. Let's grow the sport. I'm Abigail Johnson and you're listening to the Tennis in the UK podcast.